All right, hey VC, I'm Jamie, welcome back, and uh, I want to just take this opportunity to wish you and yours a very happy Thanksgiving. It is a Thanksgiving Day weekend across Canada, and uh, yeah, my family will be will be getting together for this weekend, so certainly very thankful for family. Uh, my son will be visiting from Michigan, also my daughters from, uh, from Montreal and Ottawa, so yeah, the whole family will be together uh, this weekend, so certainly very thankful for that. And uh, yeah, I like uh, Thanksgiving uh, in, in mid-October. It's just a nice time of year to celebrate. You know, there's just that little bit of uh, the briskness in the air, coolness in the air, and, uh, you know, the leaves are changing color. So it's it's a nice time of the year for a get-together. So, again, very happy Thanksgiving. Want to wish uh, fellow VCers a very happy Thanksgiving in Canada, uh, including Chris and Blues Guy Vinyl. Also, Joel, Planet 13. Uh, Jeff at Speaker's Corner, just down the road from me. Also, Dan at Dots and Loops. Love you, Dan. Also, uh, a shout-out to Happy Thanksgiving to Rob at Vinyl 79. Also, Off the Beaten Tracks, Miss Lady Soul, Edwin, Pretty Green vinyl guy and as nomad to name just a few and i know i've left uh, several off the list and uh, again uh, happy thanksgiving and certainly happy thanksgiving to our international community uh, around the globe uh, happy thanksgiving from all of us uh, in canada so yeah so certainly very thankful for family thankful that my family is getting together uh, this weekend and uh, also thankful to the vinyl community thank you so much for the videos and uh, it's amazing this community i was just watching uh, uh, mazzy's video the other day mazzy out of uh, Seattle, I believe, and he was talking about uh, it's his post about uh, oldies but goodies. So he's taking a look a lot of a look at a lot of the 50s artists like uh, Buddy Holly or the Everly Brothers and he was showing a few Everly Brothers albums and showing one in particular, A Date with the Everly Brothers. Looked interesting, didn't have it. What are the odds? He shows it that morning, or at least I see the video that morning, and then later that day I'm at my vinyl, uh, or sorry, thrift store, uh, Value Village, looking through the vinyl and sure enough it's there. So I picked it up that day. Saw the video in the morning, picked it up later that day. What are the odds? And uh, it's a great album. A Date with the Everly Brothers. Uh, this is when they were on the Warner label. Uh, this includes Love Hurts, also Kathy's Clown. Uh, I like their cover of Lucille on this one. And, of course, the great harmonies of Phil and Don. Now, this is a pretty worn copy, but uh, as I say, I picked it up at... Uh, well, your village and the, you know this got you know, like tape around it, and as I say, it's pretty warm, but it plays okay. It plays all right, and uh, on the classic blue uh, Warner label, and uh, yeah, it's a nice little scuff there, and I say some of the tape marks, but uh, there you go. Uh, that's what I love about the VC, the vinyl community. I love the recommendations. I love when something like that happens and uh, yeah keep those videos coming we're so thankful for them and uh, everybody does just a great job and everybody's got a, a different perspective which i absolutely love and also thankful for the music thankful for the uh, musicians who gave up so much uh thinking a lot about ginger baker this week wasn't sure if i was going to post anything about to ginger baker since there's been so many uh videos and online uh, tributes and was watching recently some uh interviews with uh, ginger baker along with uh, eric clapton and jack bruce uh talking about their Royal Albert Hall shows for their reunion back in uh, 2005. And I hadn't seen those uh, interviews before, and they're quite quite interesting. It's like a part one and a part two. You should be able to find them on YouTube, but if you can, uh, check them out. They're really interesting videos. And so I don't have much cream on vinyl. I have a Blind Faith featuring Ginger Baker on vinyl. I've shown that before, but... Uh, since my unofficial title is King of the Box Sets, I don't know if I have shown this before, but this is the uh, box set that came out a few years ago, uh, Spotlighting Fresh Cream. And this is really a nice uh, box set, which I don't understand is that they haven't released anything, as far as I understand, since this, uh, you know, spotlighting some of the other great Cream albums. But this is a nice box set, uh, uh, three CDs and then Blu-ray. And this features uh, Fresh Cream, both mono and... Uh, with mono singles and also the mono French EPs. And then it's uh, also the stereo album with session recordings and new stereo mixes. And then it's Fresh Cream with early versions, also the BBC sessions, and then the Blu-ray features Fresh Cream, both uh, stereo and uh, mono. That sort of thing. So I don't know if I can... without too much glare there... Yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice box set, I must say. Okay, so yeah, it's in a nice little slip case like this, and just pops out like that. And it comes in the with the CDs, and then with the book. Let's uh, take a look at the book uh, first, and it's a nice 
card bound. And I do like this one. There's a lot of vintage photos that I hadn't seen uh, previously on this. And it reminds me, uh, certainly for the mid 60s, uh, when they would get groups to, you know, here, here, go pose over here holding this or go stand in this. And then the groups would pretty much just do it. It's interesting that I don't think they would do that as much uh, today as they did certainly <laughs> back in the 60s or even the 70s, if you will. Okay, let's uh, take a look inside. But yeah, some vintage photos. And certainly just love this band, Cream. Just love the level of musicianship. Freeform. And it's interesting uh, watching some of those interviews with Ginger Baker. And right off the top, he says they never really considered themselves a rock group because he said that he and Jack, uh, this is Ginger Baker speaking, that he and Jack are jazz musicians and Eric, who is a blues musician. So they never really considered themselves a typical rock group. They were certainly considered a rock super group, uh, if you will. But uh, certainly from that approach, he says they were never really, you know, jumping up and down on stage or doing stuff like that. It was all about the music. <laughs> some thin, again, some vintage photos here. And certainly, again, it's interesting when you watch Ginger Baker play, he wasn't really a hard player, like, say, even somebody like Neil Peart or Keith Moon. Again, played in much more of a jazz style, but, man, what a player. Yeah, and I don't have any of the Ginger Baker uh, solo stuff or his, if you will, solo band stuff, but I'll have to seek that out. I know certainly members in the vinyl community have lots of Ginger Baker, that's for sure. Okay. And we have some of the singles there. Okay. Oops. And there we go. Okay, so there's the book, and then the CDs and Blu-ray are simply housed uh, inside like this, and whoops, that's like that, and then that opens up like that. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, so we've been listening to uh, some Cream Ginger Baker this week. Uh, I think I've shown this before. Uh, I have the Cream uh, box set. Um, those were the days, and this uh, features all the studio albums, lots of live stuff as well, and some of the uh, singles and demo versions. Uh, certainly at the time for the Bang for the Buck, this was really a good one. This came out in 1997. And this is part of the Apollodor Chronicles series where they issued a number of box sets in this style, which is quite nice. Uh, you know, very nice and convenient. I don't know if I'll be able to show you what's in here. Uh, like that. And yeah, you've likely seen this. I won't go through the booklet too much here, but it just opens up like that. And then this was a nice nice format. A lot of times these booklets would come out because they were just stapled uh, inside here. So a lot of times, unfortunately, these booklets would come out. But it's not the worst of it. But, uh, you know, lots of text and that sort of thing. So always really enjoy that. But I'm going to have to get some cream on vinyl. I know it's like, I don't know. But uh, I was listening to Cream's Royal Albert Hall. And I have this on, on the uh, double CD that came out uh, London, May. 2nd, 3rd, 5th, and 6th, 2005. And I remember when this came out, I was initially a little disappointed. Uh, I didn't think the performances just really had that. Is They felt like they were kind of missing something. I mean, it's hard to replicate uh, their energy from the 60s, but in retrospect, thoroughly enjoy listening to this. And yeah, maybe their energy wasn't quite there, but the playing still is. I mean, when you just listen to Jack Bruce's bass, Ginger Baker on drums, Eric Clapton, and... Uh, yeah, it's interesting that they look uh, fondly back at this at this particular reunion. Now, when they switched it uh, to the shows later in New York, those shows didn't go as well. There was, again, infighting, particularly between uh, Jack and Ginger, and then they were able, never able to get back together uh, after that, sadly. But at least the Royal Albert Hall, you know, the tickets sold out in, what was it, like less than an hour or a matter of minutes. And everybody felt really good about these shows. And overall, the shows went really, really well. And this is just on the <clears throat> double CD. This is also available on vinyl for sure that uh, maybe I'll have to pick up someday. And just kind of in like that. And there you go. 
So memories of cream. So thankful for the music, thankful for the VC, and certainly thankful for family on this uh, Thanksgiving Day weekend uh, across Canada. So again, from all of us, happy Thanksgiving to you and yours, and uh, hope you have a great weekend, and we'll chat again real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.